Chad, uh, go ahead. Start explaining this comic. You're really, you're really gonna make me explain this comic. Mm. So the max is by. This is good. okay, guys. So real quick, we're actually. That's not who it's by. It's by Sam Key. I'm, I'm right. getting to that. Once upon a time, there were dimensions, and there was the Max, who was queen of the leopards, but so was she, and they argued about feminism all lots of times in two dimensions, all uh, dynamicism, 21 panels per page. Okay, so this comic is by Sam Keith, and it is the art is also by Sam Keith. It is revised by IDW. It is essentially about this guy, the Max, who is actually in his, in an alternate reality from the Outback. And this girl here, he protects her, and she's actually the ruler of the Outback in this alternate dimension, reality type thing. And this is the mask. And that is what this book is about. Alright, welcome back to Big Geeky Couch, and uh, today we're doing a segment called Change My Mind. Now. <laughs> My opinion is that the Max is adolescent trash, but I'm open-minded, I'm willing to have my mind changed, so if you think you can convince me otherwise, uh, you know, change my mind. We've got a panel of college students here to try and change Mr. <laughs> Dave, Mr. Mr. Lily's mind. Dave, we try to change your mind, that champion was good. What makes you think we're Pastor changing? Wickham <laughs> couldn't do it, how can yeah, we do how it? how can we do it? If you really think that you can protect the Max by diverting to something worse, your problem is assuming that that is worse. <laughs> Off to a good start. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the max. Um, more like the men. So yeah, the men, max. Yeah. Max power. Yeah. I got that off a of hairdryer. So the max. Honestly, I I enjoy the max. I'm sorry, I do. My my mind is not changed, max. but like I'm open to being changed. What did you enjoy about? The Max. <laughs> oh, wow. Alright, um, Kit. What did you enjoy? <laughs> well, so, I, my, my thing with the Max, in all seriousness, I enjoyed the Max because it took a lot of risks to actually try to be a unique book. And, yeah, that's all I got to say about the book. <laughs> Like, <laughs> mind change! <laughs> Stamped! Amazing! Wow! No, so the Max itself, it tries to bend and walk different. <laughs> di different. The fuck is that the best angle? It's like, well, like they took risks. It's like slow to skateboarders. <laughs> All right, so oh. we gotta get back to changing Dave's yeah, mind. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right does Chad, will Chad take another chance at changing his no. mind, or is it Keith's turn? Dave, you, your turn. I'm not changing his mind, motherfucker. <laughs> hey. mind. In all realism, though, hand me one of these pieces of literature. Um, literature. For anyone, he called it literature. Mind change. Stamped. <laughs> for anyone getting into comics, if you're like, oh, I don't know if I can be successful. I don't know if I'm that good. Uh, this was turned into a TV show on MTV, so life finds a way, you know. If you want to take the some thing risks, is that this is a liquid TV show comic book. It is, and I mean, it kind messes. of defined that era yeah. of television and alternate comics. It's it's ultimately it's a halfway point between Robert Crumb style like debauchery and Rob Liefeldian dynamicism. Yeah. Um, how much it, how much it does for you? Uh, it's kind can of vary. It could definitely vary. I ultimately, I liked the artwork, I thought the artwork was cool, yeah. I even liked the character dynamics, yeah, I liked when yeah, they yeah. talked to each other, they had fun things to say, like, I made fun of it, like, oh, they argue about feminism a lot, but that was kind of funny, yeah. like, I liked that, I... but I didn't, there was no hook to the story, I didn't really know what it was about, I read the first six issues, and it was just, it was all over the place, and while parts of that all over the place were interesting, it ultimately never added up to anything. It is, and maybe it does eventually, but if I'm going six issues in and see, I'm still not sure where it's going, that's not and good. And that's probably the problem with this book that I will say. It doesn't start making sense until roughly around issue eight. And I, would, and I know that's like, oh my god, that's not really great. But if you're willing to stick through it, it actually becomes pretty good. It starts, I, I want you to people can improve. I want you to yeah. explain to me how it makes sense. And so, here's the here's the trick. You have to do it without sounding like a stoner describing his ex-girlfriend. Well, shit, I'll just leave for now. <laughs> but, Bye. So, Bye, Chad. What it talks about is it gets into that he is her essential guardian protecting her in our plane that's right now. That's so that's what this is right now. So he gets stuck into our plane, but he still acknowledges that he is from the Outback, which is his 
primary domain plane. Steakhouse. So what is happens is that the realities are bleeding, the reality of the Outback is bleeding into our world and trying to go after her. Because they think that she is essentially this all-dominant person in their world. Steakhouse. Yeah, yes, because it's called the Outback. So that's what this book is about. It gets more interesting as it goes along. I really enjoy the artwork in it. I love this one where it rhymes a lot. But I love that. Yeah, the animated the animated issue where everything yeah. rhymes was that was fun. To, that was very fun to read it, and it even kept iambic pentameter, which I like. But I think yeah. this book actually, I have a newfound respect for the Max for just a very very small reason, and it might not mean anything to you guys, but I hated this book originally when I first mm -hmm. read it. <laughs> Let me finish. Get out of here. Shut up. <laughs> so when I first read this book, I actually hated it, but. That was because I was really reading your more stand standard superhero titles. I was this is reading, definitely I, not that. It's not. <laughs> so when I went back and I read it again when we started before we did this video, I found a newfound respect for it because it was this weird abstracted superhero title. It's very. It is yeah. ambitious. The art, like yeah. like I said, the artwork is good, and like I feel like the writing is trying to be yes. something. And maybe like you said, it does turn into something. And I can understand comics can take yeah. a while to hit their gear. Maybe this one doesn't in its first six issues. I actually do plan to keep reading it because right, I, I know too. it's a, I know it's a part of comic book history, so I want to at least finish the rest of the volume yeah. I've bought. The, the um, great thing is though is that this book essentially did spawn TV shows. It started merchandise. Like this was a this this was kind of one of those books that broke into the independent industry along with Spawn. It was right around that time, movie. yeah. yeah. So it did do a lot in the history of comic books. There's nothing, and I know this is a really dumb fact about this, there's nothing in this book of the memorabilia that is below 10 bucks to buy. Really? Yeah, like there's nothing that well, is... Well, that kind of indie cred stuff can be like that. Yeah. Jeez, what did you think so, of the book? Yeah, what did you think? Because you're like super quiet on this. I got confused as hell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a confused... Even if you can't follow it, the, the panel layouts are... They're so dynamic, it can yeah. be hard to figure out what's happening. It's yeah. very... Oh, go on. Yeah. No, go. It's very abstracted. <laughs> it's very... You have to be paying attention to it. Yeah. But when you... When you pick up the book, even if you put it down for a couple days and then come back and pick it up, which is essentially what I did with this, I never felt like I was struggling to get through it. Okay. You know, I kind of felt like I was like, oh, cool, that was an issue a day or two issues a day. I was like, cool, I'm getting through this, but I'm reading something that is beyond what, I guess, my comfort level is. Was Maybe for you, it's the liter so, literary equivalent of vegetables where it's good for you. Y yes, totally. So, I mean, I... I it doesn't necessarily taste as good as cake. Yeah, right. I mean, I enjoyed the Max. I thought it was fun. I thought it was just different. I just thought it was... It's fun. very different, yeah. for sure. Like, it's not yeah. like a certain book that we're reviewing soon, or, you know, a certain, you know, ATM, if you will. <laughs> uh, but uh, we won't... We won't go into that, but Dave, oh, what did you ultimately think of the Max? Because I want to know more. Um, my mind hasn't been totally changed, <laughs> but I will say the uh, the work is very ambitious. You can feel that the creator has a lot of passion for what they're doing. Yeah. They they are taking some risks. I don't think it quite works, but I feel like a book like this is something that will put a creator on the track to right. being exceptional. Yeah. So this to me is like early work from someone that is going places. And again, well, Sam Keith went a lot of places. Well, there yeah, he's, he's done well he's for done, himself. Well. Yeah, yeah, so I don't like I. For me, getting through this was like a chore because it was like there's all this pretentious stuff, and then the artwork was like too like extreme with five X's and. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, and then like the plot didn't make sense. It was like, oh, actually, she was raped long ago. We're edgy because we include rape in the story, and it fractured her psyche. And now there's like five realities, and this one guy she hit with a car, and he's homeless, <laughs> but he comes back as the Max, and it's like it's like. Wait, she hit him with a car? Yeah, she does. It's, it actually oh, goes back off. into that later on. Um, hence why, if you actually can see the symbolisms of rabbits throughout the actual thing, which... It's I didn't not... catch that he was a rabbit. Okay, well, no. that's actually later. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, it's a lot of ingredients thrown out. They don't really work, but it's it's like if you're if you're not expecting a cohesive storyline and you just want to read through it, it works. Yeah. Too bad. No, so. I would I mean, say if you want something similar with like kind of that 90s era edge to it, but with, I think that introduces itself and executes itself better, I would say Scud would be a better choice. Scud, the, disp really Scud. Scud the Disposable Assassin. I would say that's similar, it's very similar in terms of how it looks and how it is written, but it presents, it, it's presented better and yeah. more cohesively. I don't know, I mean, I, I have a more response, like a more, like, 
well-respected aspect of the Max. Um, like so, I said, I get it. Yeah, like I get it, but it's not for me. <laughs> it's not for everybody. I will say that, and it took a lot of risk. It's fun. Well, I mean, I will say one risk they took was copyright violation when they blatantly put Calvin and Hobbes in there. No, it's uh, they call him Henry and like Aristotle or something. Like oh well, then it's not copyright violation yeah. if they. Just Savage don't. Dragon was allowed to be there because this was an image title, even though this is the republished one. But oh yeah, IDW. Savage Dragon. Yeah, that was weird when I when I flipped through this book and I was like, oh, Savage Dragon is. He's in just kind of there too. He Pitt's doesn't... in it too, and he just they try to fill that in as well because he's an older character too from the comp this around this era. And he's just kind of there. I didn't acknowledge that he was it until they actually said, Oh, it's Pitt! I'm like, oh, that guy, that alien thing. It might have just been an early crossover to try and boost sales. Probably. That I to mean, me actually made me like it less, because I was like, oh, this is trying to be a really pretentious, deep book without actually being deep. But then they have like this blatant, ham-fisted crossover, so yeah. I'm like, oh, wow, you're so deep that you I have don't... Savage Dragon. <laughs> Honestly, there's not very much of a history of this book, except it did essentially become like a liquid TV style yeah. comic book. It broke the aspect of that not all comic books need to be about your everyday superhero. And it's still about a superhero, but he's a pretty pretty bizarre yeah, one. He's weird. And I like him. I, I, I enjoy the Max. I think he's cool looking. I think he's excited. Yeah, I do like his design, I will say that. Yeah, I like his big I think buff tooth design. I like his big punchy <laughs> Stop giving no to the handicap. <laughs> so, but our guy I also like the new coloring they did for this, this Yeah, the I colored mean colored pencil and ink wash color. So, it looks really nice. So guys, if you're interested in the Max, proceed with caution. You're, in, you're incorrect, but Definitely. proceed with caution. Proceed, proceed with knowing that this book is going to be very inconsistent, incoherent, but I think it's kind of fun, weird ride. If you want to learn what that era of alternative comics was about, this is probably a, this is a yeah. good way, place to start. Yeah, so this was our sort of review. This was a, oh, it was a review. Yeah. yeah, well, this was our view on the Max. Check it out. Don't. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave us a comment, mainly about. Well, anyway, just leave us a comment, like and subscribe, and we get see maxed. You next time where we review <laughs> Kit. What are we reviewing next time? We are reviewing a little gem from 2006 known as the best comic in the universe. Oh boy! By Maddox and Leah Tishioni. See you next time. <laughs>